Growing up, I played the Super Nintendo and the GameCube, so I was a Nintendo kid, so I sort of grew up on things like Super Metroid, Castlevania, all the Mario games, that sort of thing. And when I grew up, I played a lot of games um, on my Atari. So my dad bought an Atari for um, basically for his work, and my brother and I, like we played a lot of games on it, like many hours playing Gauntlet. Actually, when I was growing up, I wasn't allowed to play a lot of video games, and occasionally if I could get time on the computer, I'd always play like online games. Mostly just Flash games or Age of Empires sometimes, because it was already installed on the computer. Do you feel that video games can incite aggressive behaviour? No. 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 Um, there, there's a lot of studies that say, yeah, they do, but if you actually look into them, a lot of them have been debunked and unfounded, basically, uh, by people who are already biased towards that opinion. So in a scientific study, that's not exactly, it doesn't hold credence. And whenever people say, on the news, oh, scientists have reported this has happened. It's very, it's always very vague sources. I never really trust it when people say that. Is in your opinion, is it possible to become addicted to video games? Absolutely, yes. It's possible to become addicted to almost anything, uh, from scratch cards to things like that. I think with games in particular, it can be a little bit, um, a, li a little bit more of a problem because. Games like uh, Diablo Destiny have a sort of loot system that, all, mm. that act as sort of a slot machine. It's harmful, I would say, to addictive personalities. 11pm at night you can just turn on your computer and play a game. Or you can turn on your console and play a game and I think that accessibility is what people confuse with addiction. Do you feel there is a gender bias in video gamers and is that changing? Well, I think there's a gender bias in that sense that people think a video gamer must be a teenage boy. But obviously the studies show that the largest gaming demographic are women in their 30s. Just in general, people who play games, mm. it's, it's as diverse as ever right now. Yeah. And I feel that that stereotype of the, the little shy nerd playing games by himself the in his bedroom. Kind of buck teeth or sort yeah. of like lispy, whining voice. It is, it is changing and that is, that is great. Do you think there is a stereotypical representation of video games in the modern media? I say that there has been in the past sort of 10 years or so, but we're starting to see that slowly diverge. But I think that's also, you know, driven by the games industry as large, because the, the video games that have the largest marketing budgets, you know, are obviously kind of like first person shooters, games like Call of Duty. And whenever it's represented in the media, in mainstream media, you can tell they, they have attached negative connotations in their news reports. But there definitely is um, progression, but it's just very slow. Like five years ago you had games like Lollipop Chainsaw coming out and that was like a girl in a bikini sort of slashing guys with a boyfriend's head on the side. And in some ways that sort of area of the industry is falling away. I'd say that's showing, seeing all those reviews, people realising that we don't want women depicted this way anymore. It's very past its time, the jokes are bad. So in a game like Tengami, I think the, the, what we were talking about more with Tengami is should the character have any gender at all? Because for the game it's not important um, whether it's a woman or a man. We always wanted to actually add a female character on later on and we did design work for it. The best design decision would have been that the, that the character would have been genderless. The modern games industry is, is going through a transition. It's going from this very small sort of tiny industry to becoming worldwide, it's huge now. And the changes we're seeing in issues like representation and gender and religion are slowly getting better. We've hit some blows in the past 10 years or so, but that just means that the industry is going to push forward for even more highs. And with VR on the horizon, it's only going to get better.